Yo, what's up good people? Welcome to this session as we continue with the discussion of integrating M-Pesa into our web and mobile applications. So in this video, we'll focus on checking the payment status after users receive the SDK push. So if that sounds interesting, let's dive right in. In the previous session, we saw that after a user interacts with the SDK push and it's cleared on their device, you always receive a post request to the callback URL that you provided with some data in the request body. And we saw we can we handled that in the previous session, but we said that we can't entirely rely on that because it comes on later and it won't be a good user experience when you are providing the message on the front end part. And in today's say in today's video we'll focus on what's the alternative of that so that so that we can give our users a good user experience. Also, just a reminder, when we're discussing about the available APIs that Safaricom has, we say that we'll focus on this M-Pesa Express. And we also say that this M-Pesa Express APIs, this M-Pesa Express has two other APIs, that is the one for simulate and for query. And the one for simulate, we've already used it, it's used to send the SDK push. And this other one for query, it's, it's used to check the status of the transaction. And it's the one that we'll use in this video. So let's just dive right in. So for you to use the M-Pesa query API, you, need, you have to have the shortcode and the checkout request ID. And this checkout request ID, we saw in the previous session that once you send a, an SDK push, there is that checkout request ID that you are given. And that's, that's the ID that we'll use in this API. And also, just like the other APIs, we say that all APIs, you must use the authorization API. I think that that was clear from the beginning. Uh, you can see this API is just focuses on querying the status of an M-Pesa Express SDK push transaction and it helps verify if the transaction was successful, pay, failed or it's still pending. Okay, so with that we can just see how we can how we can use this API and I provided some simple steps here and we'll just follow them step by step. So the first step is to generate a timestamp and this timestamp will be used in creating the password for your query. So just like how we saw before in the SDK push, our timestamp should be in the format year, month, day, hour, minute, second. So it's to create a timestamp in simple, I provided some snippets here in Node.js and Python. So in Node.js you can use moment, but we already discussed this before. This is the code and in Python it's even simpler, you just get, you just use this detail module to get the timestamp. So the next thing is to generate the password now and you have said that this timestamp is used in the password so the password should be a base 64 encoded value of the shortcode the passkey and the timestamp so for till numbers we say that the shortcode is the store number and for pay bill number the shortcode is just the pay bill number so yeah so this the 64 value of of this huge string that's what should be the password so you can just generate the base 64 encoded in any language and I just provided this function here in node that generates that that value in base 64 and in python you can also use this 60, base 64 encode so in any language that you use you'll just find that but just keep in mind it should be a concatenation of short code, pass key and the timestamp so the next thing is just to prepare the request body and we say that we require this checkout ID and this checkout ID is got when you send the SDK push. So the, the body should have a short code. The business short code should be the value of your short code there. And you have said a lot of times that for the till, it's here. In case of till number, short code is the store number. If it's a pay bill number, the short code is the pay bill number. Then this password, you just put the password that you generate here. Then the timestamp, you put the timestamp that you generated here. And for the checkout ID, you put the checkout ID that you got once you sent the SDK push. So if you send the SDK push, there's that response you get and that it, it has the checkout ID there. Checkout request ID, it's there. So okay, so the next thing is just to set the headers. And as you have said a lot of times that you can't use any other API for Safaricom without using the authorization API. So for the headers, you just the key authorization should have the value bearer, then space and the token. And this token is gotten from the authorization API. 
So we saw how we can get the token. We discussed this in this step here when we are, we are doing the SDK push. So we'll just call that function. We say that you can store, you can, you can make it a function, then you call that function every time before calling any, any other API. So in this case, we'll just call that function, then get the token. Then we'll use this token in our headers here. And the same, the same is done in Python, just the same thing. So the next step is to send the query request now. So Safaricom provides this endpoint that you can send uh, the request there. So the difference between the endpoints, we said a lot of times that if you're using Sandbox, this this domain subdomain changes to Sandbox. If it's live, the subdomain changes to API, but the other part is just the same. So the, I have a, a code snippet here to show the whole process. So here I get the token, we discussed about this. And this, and I've said that this API requires the checkout ID. So this function can accept the checkout request ID as a, as a parameter. Then you get the token, then this is the URL. This one is for the sandbox part. Then these are the headers. You said the headers, this is the request body. I've discussed about the, the headers and the request body. So yeah, I'm using Axios to send the, a post request to the above URL, which is was here. And I attach the, I also put the request body and the headers in my request. Then you'll get a response. Then you can just do anything you want to the response. Then in case of an error, you can just say there was an error querying the SDK push. And keep in mind, you can see here, I'm calling this function with this request ID because this, it's called the checkout request ID because it's required here. You can see it's required here. So I, I pass it as a as an argument, then I'll use it here in my request body. So you can the same thing is with Python. Maybe you can look at the sample data that we get back after sending that that request. So this is the sample data that we get. So we get uh, this data that contains the response code the response description, the merchant request ID, the checkout ID, the result code and the result description. So this resp response code, it indicates the success or failure of the of the request. So if the value is zero, it means it was a, it was a successful request. Then this result code here, it's also the same. If it's the result is successful, it will be zero. Zero indicates a successful request and this one indicates the user had insufficient funds then 1032 indicates that the user was uh, the request was cancelled by the user and there's this result description also that gives the description of the results whether it was successful it's still pending or it just failed so yeah so you can use this result code to give the user good user experience and that's the whole point of having this payment uh, this query API to check the status of the payment and how we can use this API is that immediately after sending the immediately after sending the we'll, we'll see this in the next in the next session how we'll, how we'll implement this in real life but in, immediately after sending the SDK push instead of waiting for the callback you can immediately after sending the SDK push and the SDK push is successful you can also use this API to check the status so you can use something like an interval so maybe you call this api after every like two seconds so that you can check the the status of the transaction every time after two seconds depends on the logic that you want but i think two seconds it's okay so after every two seconds you check the the status of the transaction then you give the user real real time uh, real time information like the, maybe someone entered the wrong pin insufficient funds we'll see i will do that tomorrow okay that's that's what this one this api is used then also you can also do something maybe after after certain time let's say 30 seconds and the user has done nothing you can just can end the interval clear the the interval and cancel the because maybe some you can tell someone that they took too long so you just cancel and they should pay again but it, it entirely depends on what you want you as a developer and how you want the system to be used and also what kind of system you're developing so that's the summary of this SDK query API and you have seen its use and how you can use it. So see you in the next video where we'll combine everything into one one simple application and we'll see how we can use that. So see you there. Peace out.